So with that, we'll go ahead and thank you, Zoom. Uh, we will be recording now. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the um, work group for arts and culture for Envision Athens. We are called Create Athens. My name is Erin Barger. Um, let's do very quick introductions. We have enough new faces um, that I think that would be timely. Let's just do um, pretty quick intros, name and affiliation. I'll kick us off. Erin Barger with um, Envision Athens. Next, John. Hey everybody, John Morris, project coordinator with Envision Athens. Uh, Aditi. Hi everyone, I'm Aditi. I'm a community development fellow with Envision Athens. And Mux and Friends. Hi, I'm Mux. I'm an artist here in town. I'm Rick Jun with Dan Joker Joker. Maria Ramos, Ramos Studios, artist about town. Yeah, good to see you guys. Landon. Uh, Landon Bub, recently promoted president of Athens Area Arts Council. Yay! Congratulations. Yeah, well you. deserved. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. Hey, y'all. I'm also a fellow with Envision Athens. Tina, our special guest for the day. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm Tina Lilly. I'm executive director of Georgia Council for the Arts. We'll be hearing much more from Tina in just a moment, but let's introduce the rest of ourselves first. The one and only Marilyn. Oh, good morning. Marilyn, we'll forget. <laughs> um, we'll say ACAC connection this morning. <laughs> nice. Um, Lauren. Good morning, Lauren Fancher, Athica. Glad to see all of you. Amanda. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda. I'm the Communications Fellow with Envision Athens. Abby. Hi, I'm Abby Kaysen. I um, am a Development Associate and Visual Art Coordinator at Nucci Space and recently uh, uh, elected Vice President of the Athens Area Arts Council and I'm an artist. <laughs> nice. Eric. Hi, I'm Eric Neesmith, I'm publisher of The Bitter Southerner, as well as a board member for Athens Made. Welcome, Eric. Stephanie Rains. I'm Stephanie Rains. I'm the Arts Division Administrator for um, Athens Clark County Unified Government. Madeline. Hey everyone, I'm Madeline. I work with Creature Comforts and I'm a um, member of the Athens Cultural Affairs Commission. Allie. Hey y'all, good morning. I'm Allie Hellinga. I'm the community manager also at Creature Comforts working with Madeline. Dr. Sutherland. Uh, David Sutherland, I'm uh, at the University of Georgia. I teach, um, as you know, Tina in the creative economy, uh, focused on the creative economy. Soon to be emeritus, I, I retire July 1st. So I'm going to be a full-time community member after that. Congratulations on that. Um, Lynn. Hi, I'm Lynn Green. Uh, I serve as the managing director of the Morton Theater, part of athens Clark County's Arts Division's Leisure Services Department. Andrew. Hello, Andrew Salinas. I'm the chairperson of the Athens Cultural Affairs Commission. And Jake. Hello, um, I'm Jay Kinnan. I'm with the Chamber of Commerce and Membership Sales. And Michael. Hey, Michael Lahusky. I'm um, at the Georgia Museum of Art at the University of Georgia. And Camille. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm the owner at Tiny Ath Gallery. I'm on the board of Athica, and um, I do PR for the School of Music at UGA. Fantastic. So good morning, everyone. Just as a reminder, um, the priority action of this group has been to convene around developing an inclusive approach to the arts by identifying and addressing barriers to equitable access and engagement. And um, this absolutely connects in a very strong way to the work of our special guest today, Tina Lilly, who is the executive director for the Georgia Council for the Arts. Um, as we've been discussing, our creative economy is an incredibly important part 
of economic development at large and ensuring equal access to that economy um, is, is really the, the ethos and why we're here together as a group. Um, so we do have some other updates um, from this group later on the agenda, but I thought we would welcome Tina and spend um, a good bit of our time today just hearing from her about uh, a bit about your history, Tina, your background, and then the role of the council and just kind of kick off an informal discussion and um, provide some opportunity for questions at the end as well, if you're comfortable with that. Sure, absolutely, love questions. Um, hi, everyone, welcome and thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with you guys today. So uh, I am Tina Lilly. Uh, I have been the executive director of Georgia Council for the Arts since March, um, so not that long. But I've been with GCA for 14 years. Uh, previously, I was the director of the grants program. Um, so I know GCA well and have spent a lot of time um, going around the state and visiting with the uh, large and small communities, um, seeing uh, different ways that they utilize the arts for economic and community development in Georgia. Uh, my background is uh, in theater. I uh, worked in Chicago for quite a while, got my master's degree there in directing. So started out on the um, artist side of the stage and ended up um, on the administrative side. Um, uh, loved doing the work, but also loved and still love um, making it possible for other artists to uh, do their work, to raise the money, to um, have the ability to get out there and um, say what they need to say, which is really important. Uh, so I have worked in um, Chicago um, on the uh, art side and administrative side of theaters, um, came to Atlanta. Um, I grew up in Alabama. It was too cold in Chicago, even though I really love it there. It's a wonderful city. So came back south um, to work at Seven Stages Theater in Atlanta, where I was for about five or six years. Um, moved out to Madison um, to be the director of the Art Center there, and then came back to Atlanta to start with uh, GCA, uh, working in their grants department. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Georgia Council for the Arts, um, we are the state arts council. Uh, they're all 50 states and territories uh, have a state arts council. Uh, this was mandated uh, when the National Endowment for the Arts was created, that each state had to have an arts uh, council in order to receive funding uh, from the NEA. So we are part of the Georgia Department of Economic Development, which is great because we are an incredibly small department. Um, we only have four staff members. Um, but we are housed in this larger department with tourism, with film, with global commerce, um, things like that. So one, it puts us in a prime position to um, interact with those departments and figure out how we can work together um, to help uh, both the arts organizations and artists in the state and show how the arts can support those other um, industries and divisions of the economy. Um, so it's been a really wonderful experience. We've been here a little over 11 years um, and that's great. The mission of GCA is to cultivate vibrant, thriving communities through the arts. So we do that in a lot of different ways. Um, the program you may all be most familiar with is our grants program. Uh, that's where most of our money and most of our manpower goes. Um, we annually redistribute about $2 million of state and federal money 
um, across the state uh, throughout through several programs. Um, we give grants not only to arts organizations, but other nonprofit organizations, government entities, uh, schools, colleges, and libraries to do arts programming. And for us, since we are spending taxpayer money, uh, the main focus for us is that we wanna fund programs that are going to benefit the community being served. So um, we, for instance, have funded um, arts festivals and events that are gonna help increase tourism to an area. Uh, we have funded things like uh, workshops for children in uh, homeless facilities or veterans that are returning home uh, facing PTSD. Um, we funded therapeutic programs for, for these people. Um, we have funded artists uh, going into schools, um, helping to find alternate ways to teach poor subjects like science and math and uh, history, things like that. So those are just a few of the examples of the types of things that um, we have funded um, all across the state. We also have some other programs, um, Art of Georgia, where we display work by working artists in the Capitol and at the governor's mansion, uh, Poetry Out Loud, which is a performance um, opportunity for high school students. Uh, we work with other divisions such as tourism, visiting communities and talking to them about how uh, they can use the arts in their community uh, for economic development. Uh, we've done work with uh, the Department of Corrections, um, things like that. We work closely with the Department of Education. So a lot of uh, moving pieces here um, in our small division. So Erin um, asked me to touch on um, ways that we and all of us together can help uh, to build the creative economies post pandemic um, and make sure that those um, artists, arts organizations and creative industries are thriving after a year that's been so difficult for everybody. Um, if there is, I think I don't wanna say it's something good to come out of COVID because we certainly, uh, None of us uh, would wish COVID um, on the world again, but I think it has caused um, artists and arts organizations to look at the work that they're doing and kind of re-examine all of it um, in a lot of different ways, um, even down to the basics. I mean, theaters weren't able to actually use their theaters, use their performance spaces. So what does it mean to be a theater, you know, if you don't have that building? What are you trying to do and how can you continue to do it? Um, if actors can't be together, they can't be close to each other, um, they can't be close to an audience. So it's really caused a lot of re-examination, which I think is going to, um, benefit the community in the end. Um, I think it's very easy for all of us to get stuck in the way that we do things. And as we get older and younger audiences are coming up and expecting different things in their arts experiences, um, this has made everyone stop and kind of try to figure out, do we need to do things virtually? Um, do we need to do things um, through Zoom or in a different way? So I think that has been one good element that's come out of this. Um, I think it's also important as we move forward um, to focus on how the arts can be and are a part of other industries. Um, for instance, you know, health, and the arts, you know, that and being important. Um, workforce development and the arts. Um, I think that 
as I mean, you guys know, you're the choir, but um, arts can help in so many ways. I had a, a friend who was uh, an arts administrator for a group that uh, did arts in education programming. And she would go to schools and say, tell me what challenges you're facing and I will come back and give you an art solution uh, to that issue to help you address that problem. And I think that's important as we move forward uh, to emphasize those ties with other industries, other businesses, other sectors um, about how the arts can be a part of those areas. I think a very important element um, to continuing to build the creative economies is figuring out how we are going to support uh, individual artists um, who, you know, some did fine, but some have really had a rough time through COVID. Um, and for that's a, an issue we're facing. Um, as a state agency in Georgia, we are unable to give grants or fellowships directly to individual artists. Um, so I think that's something we're looking at. How do you support that sector and support these people um, whose work is so important? Um, I think one very interesting idea that's come out of this um, is the idea of a universal basic income. Is there a way for groups, for cities, for communities um, to offer artists um, what they're doing now um, in San Francisco, uh, as an example? They had artists supply and are giving hundreds of artists uh, payments of $1,000 monthly, um, which obviously doesn't cover all their bills, but maybe it keeps them from uh, losing their apartment or uh, stops them from having to get a second job so they can really focus on their work uh, because they know that it's so important for those people to get back to their creative work in order for things to move forward in the economy. Um, they're trying it also in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, giving artists uh, $500 a month. So I'll be interested to see how those efforts um, come out uh, in the end. I think that um, COVID not only has forced arts organizations and artists to look at their work, I think it's forced funders to look at our how we do things. Um, you know, we're part of a state government. There are things that are we can't change and are beyond our control, but what can we change? How um, do we have to require these things in order to give out money? How can we get money um, more quickly into the system? With Can we reduce the amount of paperwork that we're um, requiring? I think a lot of other funders are looking at those same issues um, at the same time that they're looking at equity issues. How can we make sure that our funding um, is being distributed in an equitable way? And what else can we do to make sure that happens? Um, that's something we're really gonna focus on um, this summer, we have been in emergency mode and luckily have been able to get um, money through the National Endowment for the Arts for the, from the CARES Act and also the American Recovery uh, Plan and get that money out there. Um, so that's what we've been focused on, but we're kind of anxious to revisit everything um, looking through the lens of equity and figuring out how we can do things differently than we have before. So those were my thoughts um, on what GCA is doing and, and where we're going in terms of uh, looking at uh, the creative economies moving forward. So Erin, um, did you have any questions or anyone have any questions? And 
I have about 13 questions, but I'm going to hold those and invite the, the group to kick off with any questions that you have. Tina, great job. Thank you so much. What sure, questions? Sure, sure. Okay, I'll jump in. Never one to hold back, right? So, you, you know, Tina, it's interesting. Um, as I said, and you know, we've been studying creative economies uh, around the country, around the world. And one of the things uh, we keep coming back with is how, uh, how underfunded Georgia is compared to other states. And I'm just curious from your perspective, um, what will it take to increase funding for the arts and culture in Georgia? And uh, what can we do? Uh, as a community to help in that matter. Sure, sure. Um, yes, uh, per capita funding, uh, Georgia state funding is usually right at the bottom. And if we're not last, we're very close. Um, so yes, per capita funding, um, we are at about a dime per person. Um, whereas other states are, are much, much higher. Um, I think that one thing a lot of states have that Georgia doesn't is a strong statewide advocacy organization. Um, other states have been able to keep this going. Um, Georgia did um, at one time have a very strong advocacy organization. Um, but that ended, and since then, there have been several attempts to start that again. Um, but I mean, it's very difficult um, to get a volunteer organization going that um, is effective statewide. And um, there is an organization now called Georgians for the Arts. Um, the director of that is in Savannah. Um, they have only been, you know, working the last year or so. Um, so they have um, been able to kind of network with some of the community rural organizations across the state, um, but they um, are still working to um, work with those in more metropolitan settings um, in the larger cities in Atlanta, um, and with the single discipline organizations and individual artists. So um, that is the organization now in Georgia that's working. But I think that um, one, uh, to answer your question, David, I think that's what's needed is some sort of statewide unified effort. Um, I think two, it's for people's voices to be heard. Um, I cannot advocate for additional money for uh, Georgia Council for the Arts. I can provide facts and figures, um, but the legislators need to hear from their people in their region. They need to hear from their voters that this is important to them in order to move it up the ladder. Um, so I think that needs to be some sort of unified effort. Um, and when I say unified, I think it's what I'm talking about is everyone speaking with the same voice, that everyone um, uh, is, is delivering the same message so that we don't have a few asking for, you know, this, a couple asking for that, and, you know, something to bring it together. Um, but yeah, I think it's organizations, artists, and board members, people that aren't directly um, getting grants from GCA or the state to talk to legislators about how important this is and how important support is. So Tina, just to follow up on that, I dropped the link mm -hmm. for the Georgians for the Arts Thank you. Um, in the chat box. If someone on this call or within our network is interested in that state level advocacy, would that be a great starting or connecting point? 
that would be a great starting point um, to see what they're doing, to see how you can help what they're doing involve more people, or at least to see what kind of things they're talking about and then, you know, how you can organize your own efforts, um, which that's fine. You know, you don't have to be involved with that organization uh, to do something. You can organize something on your own in the Atlanta area. Um, but Patrick Kelsey is the president. He's also a professor at SCAD in Savannah. Um, great, wonderful. Um, but yeah, uh, you can start with them or you can, you know, organize your own efforts in the uh, Athens area. But I think it's just uh, the multitude of voices. If legislators start to hear this over and over and over and over, um, if the arts are the squeaky wheel, then that's going to get attention. Mm -hmm. And I think is talking about um, not only are the arts great, which we already know, but what are the facts and figures you can give them? You know, what is the uh, economic impact of the arts in Athens or in the state of Georgia? And, um, you know, things like that, that um, tie to other things that they're interested in, you know, to improving educational scores or, improving healthcare or, you know, tying to what um, is already something that they are passionate about. That's great. Um, Stephanie, before we go on to Lauren's question, I wanna invite you to share anything about your work with Patrick. Sure, I've known Patrick for many years that I went to, he was my professor in graduate school and I've continued to work with him since then from my work in Savannah and then here. And so I just spoke with Patrick a few weeks ago and we talked about his, you know, moving into sort of, you know, post pandemic uh, networking. So I think now, like um, Tina said, working on these uh, metropolitan areas and just coordinating to identify who's interested in building a network so that we can come together and agree on priorities and talk about the best way to advocate for additional funding and just like raising the visibility of all of these um, issues in the arts and for working artists in the state. So I think, um, I think he's right now collecting almost like a raise of hands, like who's interested in, in being together. And then I think um, we've talked about having a region of uh, putting together like regional meetups is um, something we're hoping to look for funding and for uh, time and space to do that in the near future. That's fantastic. Let us know um, when there's an update on that Stephanie and how this group can connect and support. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, Thanks. and Stephanie, if um, there's information, I'm hoping to build um, a resource on our website with all of this statistical information but if there's anything you need you know do, Tina do you have this or do you have that let me know and I'm glad to pass that on great thank you mm -hmm. Lauren I believe you had a question next hey uh well <laughs> my bad y'all uh, I only hit pause of <laughs> uh, First of all, I wanted to say that I have been involved with Georgians for the Arts. Um, in 2019, I participated in the as a representative to the National Action, Arts Action Summit, which lobbies at the US congressional level. And both those organizations have uh, a lot of interest in training people, I guess, and how to lobby. Uh, some of us, I think, have conflicts about lobbying. And so because the arts are nonprofit or government supported, it sometimes can make it hard for us to participate in those organizations. If you're unencumbered by those restraints, they provide support for people to attend that national event um, through registration and travel stipends and um, it can be a really great experience. I also wanted to just thank Tina uh, for all of her service over the years. Running the grants program is a bear and um, 
I also just want to say thank you because without you guys, Athica would not have survived this year um, with the help of a partner grant and the um, CARES Act funding, we have made it. And I'm just really grateful to all the work y'all do. I was really interested to hear you talk about universal basic income. And we've had conversations um, in this group and then um, Stephanie and Dee Dee Dunphy and I have talked quite a bit and put together grant proposals around artists live workspace and the challenges in Athens in our local economy for artists to stay in the community and afford rent and studios. Um, I wonder, like, does the term universal basic income, is that freighted? And is there a, would you think it would be more palatable to people to be talking more about like a studio stipend or something less freighted with, um, you know, people's perceptions of right. competition and labor? Right. I don't know. Uh, I think that's an excellent question. Um, I was reading through something earlier today that I wasn't aware of, which was the mayor's, um, the mayor's coalition um, for basic income, which is not exclusively for artists, um, but Atlanta's mayor is a part of this. Um, and I don't know, Lauren, you may be on to something that, you know, if folks perceive this as a political um, issue, that it might, it might be seen in a negative light, whereas, um, so I, I don't know, I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's an excellent question. Um, and I think it's important um, again, I know I'm speaking to the choir, um, that something like that not, not be perceived as a handout or free money. I think that um, talking about the, um, the importance of artists in the community and for in the economy, you know, the Mm -hmm. how artists contribute to the overall economy and the vitality of a community is so important. Um, but I think there's a lot of data out there about um, how artists have suffered um, economically. And, you know, the fact that um, I would assume being able to refer to that and uh, talk about the need to help them move forward, um, you know, and liken it to funds that are going to small businesses and PPP loans and things like that. Um, I mean, it's exactly the same thing. It's just a one person business rather than a five person business. Um, but no, I think that's a good question, Lauren. Those are great questions. and. Um, in my, the nonprofit law class that I took, I think a key component to your point, Lauren, which is a great one about the limitations on lobbying for nonprofits, that's only problematic if a substantial portion of the budget is dedicated to lobbying. So I think a nonprofit can very much extend around up to 5% of the budget and certainly some of its activity toward lobbying as long as it doesn't become what the IRS considers to be substantial. Um, so I, I do understand the limitation, but I do think there might be some more flexibility than nonprofits realize at times. And I, I think having done some work locally on similar issues, I think the, the key impediment to a basic income program or something like that is the gratuities clause, which is state law. And that's incredibly limiting um, for any e exchange of currency to a specific individual. That is pretty much prohibited. And so I think taking the approach to instead fund programs um, that you can prove our community benefit, meaning anyone can access those programs 
um, maybe you know the mentoring programs that we've discussed before, which could provide you know a housing allowance, things like that. Um, Stephanie, and then let's move on after Stephanie's comment. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we connected the fact that um, the our mayor and commission. Uh, voted to utilize resiliency funds here in Athens over the pandemic. And that was the sentiment. So um, that it was a way to approach artists living in our community who were experiencing all this hardship during the pandemic and who were not eligible for the same sorts of resources that um, small businesses. And so um, through that dialogue and about, you know, wanting to just keep artists also to stay so they don't wander off to other communities. So they sort of feel fortified and um, have that work here. And that became the artist arts and community awards that were um, uh, distributed through the Athens Cultural Affairs Commission mm -hmm. in the two fifty two thousand dollar grants for public art to share throughout. And we are still seeing those um, uh, grants and uh, those awards are still being executed um, in those events. So that was a way for artists to keep working and keep sharing and keep um, keep going in our community. So we have had a, a good success with that when we're hoping that we can make the um, case for continued funding or different kinds of funding in the future here within the athens Clark County. Great point, Stephanie. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And um, Lauren, if anybody wants to follow up on that lobbying question, I'm happy to help connect us to an actual attorney uh, which I am not, to, to provide some advice in that regard. Um, I know we have several other updates, so I don't want to move on too quickly, but any final questions for Tina before we move forward in our agenda? Oh, Mux, I don't want to forget your question. Tina, are there any specific um, resources or connecting points you would offer for an indie artist? So maybe someone who's not like a, a small business owner, and Mux, right. it looks like I'm representing your question, but jump in if I'm not. Right. Um, gosh, I wish I had an answer to that question. Um, unfortunately, through GCA, no. Um, now, what some artists have done, um, and I'm happy if you want to call me or email me, we can talk further about it, um, is work with organizations um, around our grants so that, you know, you're going to them with a project, maybe, you know, I don't know what type of work you do, but um, for instance, a school or a community organization and say, I have an idea for this project and this grant is available, um, then say an eligible applicant like a school um, like a nonprofit organization, a community group, a library can then apply to us and hire you to carry out this project. Um, so we do have artists working in that way. Uh, we offer with our Vibrant Communities grant, this is a grant for small rural communities, um, we offer an artist list of artists who are available to do projects in different areas of the state. That could be anything from uh, performances to workshops and classes to doing a mural um, to doing a poetry reading, um, things like that uh, to try to um, get the word out um, to these smaller communities that want to do things, uh, but they don't know how to find an artist to paint a mural for them. Um, so try and make those connections. Um, so we have that program. Um, we have an artist, um, um, teaching artist roster uh, for artists who uh, do work in school with students. And we take applications for that and promote that to schools across the state. So those are some resources that uh, we at Georgia Council for the Arts have. And I'll put my um, email address and phone number uh, in the chat and you're welcome to contact me directly and we can talk more about you know, your work and how it might fit into some of the programs um, that we have here. And I was also going to say, um, if anyone, um, while you're out and about, 
if you see a need in the community, like, gosh, artists would really benefit from X, or I wish we had a class on this, or I wish I knew more about this, um, um, just let me know. It might not be something we can do, but it might. Um, or there might be somebody doing that work where I can say, you know, here, call them. But, um, you know, we want to try and fill those holes um, and help support artists and arts organizations. Mm -hmm. um, also, we do do quite a few grants and we always need grant panelists. So if you're new to the grant writing process and think I have no idea how to do that, um, we would love to have you as a panelist. I think it's a great way to get to know the process and learn more about what works and what doesn't in terms of grant writing and how to write successful applications. So, um, so just give me a yell if anybody's interested in doing that. If, may I say something quickly? Um, thank you, Tina, very much. Um, is this something that the fiscal scholarship program could help bridge the gap from an indie artist that's just establishing to the um, Council for the Arts uh, pool? Um, yeah, we, I mean, we're looking at, um, for different rosters, um, we're looking at, um, partially we're looking at the experience that you have, but, you know, we're also looking at what you have to offer. So, I mean, you can definitely call us and we can talk through, you know, what we're looking for and what you've done. For instance, you know, if you have a, a quite a long extensive list of, you know, things you've done as an artist, but you're hoping to start working with students, you know, we can help talk through that, um, where you might get that experience or, you know, perhaps that's part of, um, you know, what we can help with. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say um, that, you know, we wouldn't be interested in artists that don't have a lot of experience um, because, you know, you may have um, incredible experience in one area that could, you know, overlap with something else. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Tina, thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, give her a round of um, Zoom applause or whatever works for you. Um, Tina, we're going to move on um, with a, just a few more announcements and updates from our group. Um, you're welcome to stay on with us, or if you need to go, we certainly understand that as well. Yeah, I've got to run to another meeting, but guys, I mean, contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Appreciate Take you, Tina. Um, and then a quick update as we move on. Um, the Athens Creatives Directory, as you know, has moved forward and evolved quite nicely. We are in conversation right now with the Athens Convention and Visitors Bureau. I believe we discussed this in a past meeting. Um, their SEO and the historic kind of powerhouse status of their site um, is a really in, adds incredible value um, to the Athens Creatives Directory. So we're in conversation with them about what it might look like to um, locate the directory um, and connect it to the CVB website. So I don't have any final updates there, but I did want to share that with you all, especially if you have any um, questions or concerns, I would love for you to reach out to me um, offline because um, we don't want to miss some of the other updates we have on today's agenda. So does that work for everyone? Reach out to me with any questions or concerns. Um, Mux, thank you so much for joining us and for all of your creative endeavors. Um, welcome to your part of the presentation and excited to hear from you today. Well, thank you very much for letting us have this chance, Aaron and John. Um, I Appreciate you guys uh, supporting us and letting us be able to do this. Uh, so my name is Mux Blank. I'm an artist here in town. I've also done a lot of uh, uh, event organization and things like that here in town. And our most recent project over the last year since the pandemic hit has been Joker Joker TV. Uh, we're uh, basically a, uh, a, a, like a TV show type setting 
for uh, for the show. We go um, about an hour long weekly on Thursdays at 6.30. And uh, at this time, we're uh, broadcasting to YouTube. Uh, our website is jokerjokertv.com and you can get more information there. Um, basically, we, we show all types of submissions from artists like uh, short films, music videos, uh, live performances, uh, uh, you know, instructional videos, like anything that an artist can put together in a video format, we will share on the show. Um, we, uh, we, have, we have hit our uh, 50th episode, so we're almost about ready to hit our, our 52nd, which would be one year along of doing weekly shows. So uh, we, we've been working quite, quite hard on this <laughs> over the last, uh, you know, 52 weeks. So um, we, we, as I said, hit my band was grounded we couldn't tour anymore we couldn't play shows anymore um here at the at the studio which is called the uh, joker joker gallery we used to have shows here which is more like a, a house show type atmosphere uh and alternative gallery we have a living room set up with ga with uh, art showing you know during shows uh where bands from around the world would play here um, we're, we're located over on Vine Street, 145 Vine Street. Uh, currently, we, we did just uh, apply for the AAA C grant. And uh, so if, you know, we're, we're looking at trying to get help with uh, local outreach and getting the word out better to the artists here in town to let them know that we're a platform that they can use uh, in, in expressing themselves. Uh, we have uh, one of our, our main things that we would like to talk to the Create Athens and all the organizations involved is that we want to get uh, more involved in what every one of you are doing uh, and collaborate in the way that we can invite you on the show to, uh, to talk about your organizations. Uh, also, you know, getting the word out to some of the artists who apply for grants, uh, whether or not they're accepted for that grant. It'd be nice to have something to be able to offer the artist. If they didn't get the money from the grant, here's another opportunity here in town that you can pursue to better do your art. Uh, and so we wanna be that. Um, I, I've heard, I don't know if this is true yet, but I've heard that somebody is doing um, interviews of all the artists on the Athens Creative Directory. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but if, if, if it is, we would love to play those interviews on our show. And if not, then we would be interested in possibly doing interviews with a lot of those artists. Um, I think we have uh, over 200 artists now on the creative directory. So, you know, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of artists that it'd be nice to be able to get the word out. Uh, we're, you know, of course, because we're on YouTube, we're worldwide. Uh, we get a lot of submissions from artists around the world, um, but we've also represented quite a bit of local talent on our show. Um, so let's see. Um, one of the other things that we're, we're looking for is, is possibly having mentorship with, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, um, like navigating legal issues that we might have to uh, deal with. Like, uh, for instance, the... Uh, the Copyright Office's fair use um, copyright system, uh, which is what we kind of, you know, uh, uh, fall under. But we've had problems with YouTube, um, you know, cutting some of our videos because of copyright issue. You know, so we're we're looking, you know, for help on things like that sometimes. But uh, but mainly it, it, the idea that we want to pr uh, pursue with everybody here is is that connection to the artists themselves. And, and getting the word to them that we are a place for them to submit to. Um, I prepared a video. Um, I put a link in the beginning of the chat. And so like, if you guys want to view that later, it's on YouTube. And it's pretty much like a, a short commercial that um, invites artists to submit. So if you have a network and you have like a mailing list that you can send that video out to artists, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. But um, to introduce my crew, this is only part of us. We're, we're probably about a six or, seven. six or seven member team. And most of us are artists in different ways. 
Uh, I'm Mux Blank. This is Rick, and this is Maria. I'll let them talk for themselves. Well, I'm Rick Schott. I'm a spoken word artist. Uh, I did write an article uh, in the uh, the Black Vault back in 2013. Um, you know, uh, back in 2012, 2013, uh, I found myself in that homeless situation and utilized the resources of Action Ministries and uh, the Sparrow's Nest and Bigger Vision and uh, managed to be gainfully employed and with great housing and all that kind of stuff. And I like to give back to the community. You know, uh, from the time I was a kid, I was a, hey, it was the Boy Scouts or the church choir or, you know, uh, this group or that group. And uh, I really felt like uh, getting to be a part of something bigger than myself was a way of giving back to the community. So I volunteered at uh, uh, the Human Rights Festival uh, and uh, Fringe Festival. Uh, I've uh, been actually been in a documentary and done some uh, stuff with Live Forward also. Uh, to, just to kind of like throw it back and give back. Well, uh, this past year, you know, uh, I know somebody had mentioned that uh, they really hated all of the pandemic. Well, uh, I kind of missed the pandemic a little bit because uh, I went to the Philippines <laughs> on uh, March 6th of last year and got stuck there for four months trapped in paradise. Uh, one of the things that I noticed, though, stuck there, sunbathing hours and hours a day in those zero-gravity chairs, being forced to eat nothing but healthy fruits and vegetables, because there were no McDonald's. Uh, I would be watching those YouTube videos of all of our international media around the world all broadcasting from their own hermetically sealed remote bunkers, <laughs> okay? And so uh, when I finally made it back to the U.S. and uh, wanted to jump right back into all those activities, I found out that y'all closed everything. No Fringe Fest, no uh, Human Rights Fest, no Ath Fest. Uh, uh, and uh, it was funny, I was over in the Philippines so long, I couldn't afford to do anything, and I didn't even realize that the movie theaters were closed, and you could only go through the drive throughs at restaurants. So, uh, what, what I really realized is that, you know, uh, uh, having a, an art thing where people are doing things from their home, that puts us in a very unique position, because it kind of evens the playing field for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I uh, have been supporting. And uh, everybody here is volunteering, just working with uh, money out of their own pocket to put this thing together. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> I'm Maria Ramos with Ramos Studios. And um, I work on interactive social performance art where um, I, I try to draw in broken pieces of our, our community and bridge them with parts of the community that are working. Um, I get a lot of tremendous joy out of that. And I've just started doing this. Um, the part that I work with, with the jokers here, is is uh, accomplishing that goal for my studio. Um, I met the jokers through Envision Athens when Mux put a call out for collaborators. Um, and we're working together with Cowgirl the Flower Bear, who is a character around town who interviews people, places, and things in Athens that make us such a diverse and vibrant community. I fell in love with Athens again when I moved here. And um, Cowgirl goes around and finds stories of the just the, the wonderfulness of Athens. But um, being an artist that I don't even have a business license, that stuff is great to me. I don't get it. Um, and I'm so grateful for Envision Athens and all of the resources to, to help me bridge that gap and to team up with the jokers that we can we can try to accomplish that mountain together and, and create something for the community. We definitely give back in everything we do, every, every waking breath it feels like. But thank you guys. And to wrap it up, um, you know, our, our goal over the next year, now that we've we went through one year uh, and we've kind of got our system, our, our show in in place is to dig down into the local scene. You know, we, we've like I said, we've had we've had submissions from around the world, um, but 
when when people watch our show, what we kind of realize talking about this is that people see us as Athens. You know, they're watching a show that's produced in Athens. They we are Athens, you know, and uh, so that is pushing us to connect more with with the community and, and to 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 show people more of what the Athens art culture is. So and we need more submissions yeah. because uh, <laughs> we really want to focus in on Athens. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we have uh, people yes. submitting from Australia and the yeah. Philippines, all over, all over the world. And uh, we really need to, to, to kind of shine it on to what kind of talent we have here in Athens. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks. They're speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question really quick? Sure. Uh, are you all going to continue to do the TV show and also do in person? Or are you going to like try to do a hybrid maybe or something like what's the future look like? Well, well, now that things are opening up, uh, we've all got our vaccines and stuff like that. So we're ready. Um, you know, because this house, we've had shows, live shows here. So we're going to start inviting artists to come in and perform live here, possibly be guests on the show, maybe even do take, take over, takeovers of the show and share artists that they know about, you know, just things like that. Like recently we had Brain Aid on and he brought a bunch of stuff that he's had with his Brain Aid Fest and we played it on the show, you know, so... So doing the in-person and then one of the things that we'd really love to do is is start covering some of the events that are happening in town, like like AthFest. We would love to do a special broadcast during AthFest to kind of show what's going on, you know, maybe not so much show the stage, but share videos from those artists maybe have interviews with those artists, things like that, you know. And because it's a YouTube platform, it can be broadcast all over the world, which to me, in my mind, links in with the Athens Tourism Bureau because they can use that to promote Athens. Yeah. But I don't know how to link that up. <laughs> in real time. That yeah. Yes. So guys, thank you so much. Um, it, it's been so nice to hear from you and Mux and Rick. We go back way far in Athens history. So I just love seeing you guys um, thrive and create in the community. And Maria, you just joined our group a few months ago, um, but it feels like you've been with us from the beginning. So I really you. appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, so guys, we're about to close out. I know we have two quick announcements. I think there is one announcement um, from Andrew, if he's available. Yeah, I was just going to talk about the um, Melon Monuments Initiative that, that I introduced last month. Uh, I'm happy to do that again uh, in August or September. It, it's a little premature, um, very early stage. Nobody has really gotten started. Uh, so, so if that's something we want to start here, or something um, ACAC should chew on over the next couple months. I'm good either way. But it, whatever it is, it's bigger than ACAC. So it needs to involve multiple of our arts organizations. So Andrew, it sounds like you'll keep us posted and maybe we'll have more to share in the next couple of months. I like that plan. All right. So in our last minute, uh, Marilyn or Stephanie, do you guys have a 30 second update on the resource guide based on your meeting? We do, I mean, we yeah. met, we've met in person and we've talked about, we've met with our designer and we're looking at the planning and we're also um, still, we're collecting um, content and we're still hoping for some more content. So please be thinking about, um, helping us out we, we can we can share like sort of a list of things we're hoping for but i want you know we're looking for like simple straightforward useful things imagine just like the top 10 things um artists who work in dance should know or here's like the top 10 ways to prepare your um you know website this is all the things you should have to talk about like social media so we're still um, meeting in person and we're working on that so we can share some of the content we're just hoping that other people want to join us we've asked a few people personally and individually to contribute we've gotten some good things in so we're getting excited because we're really starting to get the content together and getting it organized in a useful way 
Awesome. So Stephanie, if you um, if you have anything you want us to share with the group, feel free to share that directly or we're happy to do so um, if and when you want folks to add to your content. Okay, we will share that. We're meeting tonight, I think, or very soon. Uh, so, um, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, sorry, there we go. <laughs> it's like this week, okay. We're meeting soon. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn keeps us. Uh, keeps us Since the pandemic started, Tuesday is the new Thursday or vice versa. Every Tuesday, I think it's Thursday, which basically just means I feel like I've worked about 30 hours by Tuesday afternoon just because there's a lot. So um, guys, thanks so much. We're going to close out for the day. I dropped in the chat and this will also be in the follow-up email. Um, we will reserve July for your arts and leisure opportunities and um, so that you may vacate as you wish. And then we will meet twice in August, one for our regularly scheduled meeting on the 17th and then at Creature for a networking event. Um, so look forward to seeing you in person again before too long, as long as uh, public health guidelines support that plan. Thank you so much for joining Create Athens today. Take care.